Sailing is probably unique among sports because it is so varied in the ways it can be experienced and because it can be enjoyed by just about anyone. This DVD will show you the key skills to get you started and give you the confidence to get out on the water. From the basics of going afloat through to capsize recovery, spinnakers and trapeze sailing, you will see professionals demonstrate the techniques and discover how each manoeuvre is broken down in graphic detail. It won't take you long to master these skills and you will soon be enjoying the freedom, exhilaration and the sheer pleasure of sailing a boat that's propelled solely by the power of the wind. From boats for children through to high-performance dinghies and keelboats, or comfortable and long-ranging cruisers, there really is something for everyone who has the urge to sail. Because sailing is such a varied activity, it can be hard to know where and how to get afloat. Fortunately, there are more opportunities today than ever before to learn how to handle a boat, whatever your age or background. If possible, learn to sail in a dinghy, as these small, light boats strip sailing down to its basics and provide an immediate response that really teaches you quickly. If you prefer a more stable and slower reacting boat to learn in, you can start in a small keelboat or even a larger cruiser. Rig your boat as described in the accompanying Go Sail book. Wheel the boat on its launching trolley to the water's edge and turn it head to wind to hoist the sails. Launch the boat as described in the book and get clear of the shore before you start to practice starting and stopping. The most important point to remember when handling any sailing boat is that there are no brakes. Sailors must use the power of the wind to get the boat moving and to get it to stop. The simplest way to stop is to turn the boat onto a close reach and let the sails out fully until they shake like flags and the boat stops. This is known as lying to. To start sailing, simply pull the sails in using the sheets and the boat will move forward. Watch the luff of the sail, that's the front edge, and pull in the sail until the luff just stops shaking. Remember to keep the tiller in the middle when you pull the sails in, otherwise the boat will start to turn as soon as the sails fill. Also remember to check that the centreboard is at least halfway down to prevent the boat sliding sideways. A centreboard or daggerboard is used in a dinghy to resist the sideways force from the sails so that the boat moves forward. The closer you sail towards the wind, the greater the sideways force from the sails and the more the centreboard or daggerboard should be lowered. It should be fully down when the boat is close hauled. Sideways force is zero on a run, so as you turn away from the wind, you should raise the centreboard until it is almost fully up when you are running. Always keep a small amount down, however, otherwise it can be difficult to steer. The rudder is a boat's primary steering control, but you can also steer by using the sails and, in a small boat, by using crew weight. Hold the tiller extension in the hand nearest the stern. A dagger grip with the tiller extension held in front of the body gives good control. Sometimes it is easier to hold the extension in a pan handle grip, as when tacking this 470. Turning towards the wind is known as luffing or luffing up. while turning away from the wind is called bearing away. Whenever you want to change course, you have to use one or other of these manoeuvres. To luff up, push the tiller away from you and then centralise it when you have turned onto the new course. Pull the sails in until they stop shaking at their luffs and they are set correctly for the new course. Lower the daggerboard or centreboard to counteract the increased healing force on the new course and be ready to move your weight outboard. To bear away, pull the tiller towards you and then centralise it when you have turned to the new course. In a two sail boat, ease the main sheet and the jib sheet until both sails are set correctly on the new course. Raise the daggerboard or centreboard to the correct position for the new course 
and be ready to move your weight inboard as the healing force decreases. While it's easy for the crew to sheet in the jib, as she has two hands available for the job, sheeting in the mainsail can be awkward for the helmsman, who also has to control the tiller at the same time. With the main sheet in one hand and the tiller extension in the other, this is accomplished by moving the hand with the tiller extension in it down towards the main sheet block. Taking hold of the main sheet together with the tiller extension, then raising the hand and the end of the extension to pull in the sheet. Then take hold of the main sheet near the block with the main sheet hand. Pull in again and repeat the process until the sail is sheeted in as far as you need. Most boats sail fastest when they are kept upright, so you and your crew must move your weight to counteract the healing force from the sails. This is greatest when sailing close hauled, so on this point of sail, expect to be sitting out on the side deck in all but light winds. Keel boats do usually heel over rather than sailing upright, but it is still a good idea, especially if you're racing, to try and keep the crew weight up to windward as much as possible. As you turn away from the wind, the healing force reduces and your crew can move into the boat, ending up on the opposite side to you when sailing on a run. So remember, steer the boat through the turn, then centralise the tiller when you're on the new course. Lower the centreboard as you turn towards the wind and raise it as you turn away from the wind. The closer you sail to the wind, the more you need to sit out to balance the healing force. And boats sail fastest when they are kept upright, so sit out hard in a dinghy. The course on which a boat is sailed is often described by its angle to the wind. Collectively, the different angles are called the points of sailing. For each point of sailing, or angle to the wind, you must adjust the sails, the centreboard position and the crew position to keep the boat sailing fast, upright and under full control. The easiest points of sailing when you are starting to sail are the reaching courses, a close reach, beam reach and broad reach. They are the easiest because they do not require such accurate steering or sail trimming and they're also the fastest points of sailing for most boats. On a beam reach, the wind comes square across the side of the boat at a 90 degree angle. Expect to sit right out in a moderate breeze to balance the boat. The sails should be about halfway out and the centreboard or daggerboard about halfway down. Turn towards the wind from a beam reach until the wind is about 65 degrees off the bow and the boat is on a close reach. The sails need to be pulled in a bit and the centreboard or daggerboard should be lowered to about three quarters down. Turn away from the wind until the wind is after the beam, about 135 degrees from the bow, coming over the helmsman's aft shoulder. The boat is now on a broad reach. Let the sails out and raise the centreboard or daggerboard to about a quarter down. Close haul is as close to the wind as it is possible to sail. Turn towards the wind until it comes from about 45 degrees off the bow. Put the centreboard or daggerboard fully down to resist the sideways force, which is at its maximum when close hauled. Pull the sails in tight. In all but light winds, expect to sit out hard to balance the boat and keep it upright. Sailing directly away from the wind is called running. It's the only point of sailing when a boat can sail in the same direction on either port or starboard tack. The sails are eased right out. In a single-hander with an unstayed mast, the boom can be eased to 90 degrees or even beyond when you're practiced at steering on a run. In a two-sail boat, the jib can be pulled to the opposite side to the mainsail when sailing dead downwind. It's called goose winging and it projects more sail area and increases speed. If a boat has a spinnaker, this is usually hoisted for a run. Because the healing force is near zero, the crew of a two-person dinghy sit on opposite sides to balance it. In a single-hander, the helmsman sits near the middle and should be ready to move his weight in or out to counteract any rolling. So remember, if the wind comes over the port side, the boat is on port tack. If the wind comes over the starboard side, it is on starboard tack. Reaching courses are the easiest and fastest points of sailing. Adjust the sails, the 
the centreboard position and move your crew weight to suit the point of sailing you are on. Tacking is the manoeuvre used to turn the bow through the wind when a change of course involves turning from port to starboard tack or vice versa. You can tack from any upwind course to another, but usually boats tack from a close haul course to the other close haul course on the opposite tack. It is important to make sure that the boat is sailing fast before starting the tack or it may not have the momentum to complete the tack and may stop head to wind. The process of tacking is the same whatever type of boat you sail, from a small single-hander with just one sail, through dinghies, keel boats and larger cruisers or racers. In larger boats, the larger sails put higher loads on sheets, but the principles governing the manoeuvre remain the same. During attack, you need to change hands on the main sheet and the tiller and move across the boat, keeping control of both tiller and main sheet at the same time. Handling the tiller extension and the main sheet during attack is often one of the most difficult skills to master, so don't worry if at first you end up with tangled arms, sheet and tiller. Knowing when to move across the boat often causes problems for beginners. Since your weight is needed to keep the boat upright once the sails fill on the new tack, it is important that you move at the right time. Watch the end of the boom and begin to change sides when it swings in towards the centreline. Plan to be in the middle of a boat as or just after the boom crosses the centreline. Don't forget to duck as you move across the boat. Look over at your aft shoulder to check that you're not going to hit anything. Push the tiller away and stay sitting on the side deck until the boom end starts to swing into the boat. As the boat turns, ease the main sheet slightly and keep the tiller pushed over. Lift your aft foot from under the tow strap and move it across the boat so that you are ready to move. When the boat turns through head to wind, move across the boat, leading with your tiller hand, so the tiller extension swings across ahead of you. Duck under the boom as you go. Ease the main sheet, if necessary, to balance the boat as the sails begin to fill with wind. Put your front foot under the tow strap and sit down on the side deck on the new side. Change hands on the main sheet and the tiller extension and bring the extension around in front of your body. So remember, make sure that you have plenty of speed before the tack. Check that you are clear to tack. Push the tiller until the boom starts to swing into the boat. Ease the main sheet and prepare to move across the boat. Make sure that you're in the middle of the boat as the boom passes overhead. And balance the boat and swap hands on the main sheet and tiller extension. In a two-person dinghy, it is usually the helmsman who decides when to tack. She is responsible for ensuring that the new course is clear and for making sure that the crew is ready. After the tack, she must check the sail trim, boat balance and the new course. The crew is responsible for releasing the jib sheet, picking up the new sheet, moving across the boat and sheeting in the jib on the new side as the boat completes the turn. Before the tack, the helmsman checks that the area is clear, then calls ready about to warn the crew. When the crew is ready, she calls ready and uncleats the jib sheet. The helmsman calls out Leo, then starts the turn. The tiller should move about 30 degrees from the centre line. As the boat turns head to wind, the helmsman keeps the tiller pushed over and starts to cross the boat, leading with the hand holding the tiller extension. The crew also starts to move picking up a new jib sheet as she crosses the boat. As the bow passes through head to wind, the helmsman and crew duck under the boom as it comes into the middle of the boat. As the jib starts to back or fill with wind on the opposite side, the crew lets go of the old jib sheet and pulls on the new one. The helmsman and crew sit down on the new windward side. The helmsman steers while holding the tiller extension behind her back and straightens the tiller when the boat is on the new close haul course. The helmsman swaps hands on the main sheet and tiller extension by bringing the main sheet hand to the extension, releases the extension with the other hand and brings it around to pick up the main sheet. So remember, the helmsman checks that the crew is ready 
and pushes the tiller to start the turn. Don't rush across the boat, the manoeuvre takes longer than you may think. Wait until the boom swings towards the centre before moving. As the jib starts to fill on the wrong side, let go of the old jib sheet and pull on the new one. Don't pull it across too early. Keep steering through the manoeuvre until you're on the desired course, then centre the tiller and swap hands on the tiller extension and main sheet. Jibing has the same result as tacking. The boat is turned to bring the wind to the other side of the boat. But when jibing, the boat is turned downwind, i.e. with the wind behind you, so that the stern passes through the wind. During a jibe, the boat bears away until it is heading directly downwind, then continues the turn until the mainsail swings rapidly across to the other side. The process of jibing varies slightly from dinghies with lightly loaded sails and larger boats with heavier gear and higher loads. When jibing a dinghy or small keelboat, it is normal to let the boom swing unchecked from one side to the other during the jibe, which makes it very important for the crew to keep their heads down during the manoeuvre. It also means that jibing is quicker and feels more violent than tacking. The speed with which the mainsail and boom swing across through the jibe means that it is very important that you move your weight quickly to the new side. If you are slow to move, especially in a strong wind, a jibe can end in a capsize. Before a jibe, make sure that the daggerboard is raised so that it is no more than one quarter down. Check that the area the boat will turn into is clear and steer onto a dead run with the boat well balanced. Swing the tiller extension around so it points to the opposite side of the boat and push the tiller to the windward side. Prepare to move by putting your aft foot into the middle of the boat. Turn into the jibe and watch the leech of a sail about a third up from a foot. When the boat is about to jibe, the leech will fold back to windward, showing that the wind is getting behind the sail. When you see the leech starting to fold, pull sharply on the main sheet to start the boom moving. Move across the boat, facing forward, duck under the boom as it passes overhead and centre the tiller to stop the boat turning further. Sit down on the new side, holding the tiller extension behind your back and make sure that the tiller is in the middle so that the boat does not continue turning. Bring the main sheet hand across to take hold of the tiller extension and release the tiller extension with the other hand. Bring that hand around to take the main sheet. Steer onto the desired course and trim the mainsail as needed. Adjust the daggerboard if necessary for the new course. So remember, raise the daggerboard so that it is no more than one quarter down. Check that you are clear to make the jibe and steer onto a dead run. Turn into the jibe and pull sharply on the main sheet to start the boom moving. Duck under the boom and centre the tiller. Swap hands on the controls and adjust the centreboard for the new course. In a two-person dinghy, the helmsman decides when to jibe and checks that the crew is ready, just as you do before tacking. The crew is responsible for using her weight to balance the boat through the jibe and for sheeting the jib from one side to the other. When you want to jibe, bear away until the jib hangs limply behind the mainsail, showing that you're on a dead run. Check that the area the boat will turn into is clear and warn your crew by calling stand by to jibe. She checks that the centreboard is no more than one quarter down or that the daggerboard will not foul the boom. Take another look round and call out jibe o then swing the tiller extension around so it points to the opposite side of the boat and push the tiller to the windward side to start the turn. Stand up in the middle of the boat and prepare to pull the boom across. The crew picks up the new jib sheet and prepares to sheet the sail to the new side. Watch the jib, as when the boat is about to jibe, the jib will blow across to the windward side, showing the stern is swinging through the wind. Pull on the main sheet, or jibing line if fitted, to start the boom swinging across. The crew sheets the jib to the new side when it blows across the bow. As the boom swings overhead, move to the new windward side, and centre the tiller to stop the turn. 
The crew moves as necessary to balance the boat and keep it upright during and after the jibe. When the boom is on the centre line, the helmsman and crew should both be in the middle of the boat. As the boom reaches the new side, the mainsail will fill at once and the boat will accelerate. The crew must move to keep the boat upright. The helmsman swaps hands on the tiller extension and main sheet and sits down on the new windward side. Once the boat is level, you can steer to the new desired course. The boat will probably have turned through quite a wide arc, especially in light winds, before the mainsail swung across and it is now likely to be on a broad reach on the new tack. So remember, check that the crew is ready to jibe. Push the tiller to windward and stand up in the middle of the boat. Pull the boom across as the crew picks up the new jib sheet. Watch the boom and duck as it passes overhead. Sheet in the new jib sheet, balance the boat and centre the tiller for the new course. A capsize is always a possibility if you sail a dinghy, even in a stable general purpose dinghy. And it becomes much more likely if you sail a high performance dinghy. The most important thing to remember when you capsize is to always keep hold of a boat and never attempt to swim to shore. A capsized boat is far easier to spot than a swimmer's head, and the shore is usually further away than it looks. If you capsize a single-hander, it is best if you try to climb over the high side directly onto the daggerboard as the boat capsizes. This is usually possible when the boat capsizes to leeward, but more difficult when the capsizes to windward on top of the helmsman. Getting onto the daggerboard as the boat capsizes makes it possible to right the boat quickly and also helps avoid exhaustion through having to swim around the boat and climb up onto the daggerboard. If you end up in the water, reach up and pull down on the daggerboard and pull on the gunwale if you can reach it. Climb aboard as the boat comes upright. The standard method for writing a two-person dinghy is called the scoop method because one person is scooped aboard as the other pulls the boat upright. The weight of one person in the boat as it is righted makes it more stable and helps prevent it capsizing again. During a capsize recovery, you and your crew will be out of sight of each other during much of the procedure, so keep talking to each other to make sure that you know what is happening and ensure that the other person is safe. When you've capsized, immediately check that you're both safe and not trapped under the boat or sails. Whoever is nearest to the middle of the boat should make sure that the centreboard is fully lowered. Then you should both pull yourselves along to the transom. This is to ensure that if the boat inverts, neither of you are trapped under the upturned boat. If possible, find the end of the main sheet and pass it over the top of a rudder to use as a safety line as the heaviest person swims round to the centreboard and climbs onto it. When the person doing the writing is on the centreboard, she tells the other person to move into the boat. This crew member finds the uppermost jib sheet and throws the end to the person on the centreboard, who, once she has hold of a jib sheet, can let go of the main sheet that she was using as a safety line. The person inside the boat now allows herself to float inside the hull, holding on to a thwart or tow strap, without putting any weight on the boat that could cause it to invert. If she can reach it easily, she should ensure that the main sheet is free to run, so that the mainsail can flap freely when the boat is righted. The person on the centreboard stands with her feet close to the hull and leans back, holding onto the jib sheet. Standing near the end of the centreboard risks breaking it. Lean back and pull steadily on the jib sheet. The boat will be slow to right at first, but when the masts and sails have been pulled clear of the water, it will come up quite quickly. As the boat comes upright, the other person will be scooped aboard. The person on the centreboard can often scramble aboard by the windward shroud as the boat comes upright. If not, the crew can help her aboard over the side deck. Modern dinghies, especially high performance ones, are often very prone to invert when capsized. This is because they usually have a high amount of built-in buoyancy that is situated in the sides and the floor of a boat rather than in the bow and stern. This helps them to come upright with very little water in them, but it also causes them to float very high on their sides when capsized. Floating high makes it more likely the boat will invert. If a boat inverts, its decks can form a seal with the water, 
and the resistance of the sails underwater also makes it slow to write. The technique for writing an inverted boat is to bring it up to the normal capsized position lying on its side before proceeding with the scoop method. Remember to write the boat so that the mast comes up against the wind. This makes the recovery from the normal capsized position much easier and will help prevent the boat capsizing again. So remember, always keep hold of the boat. Check that you are both safe. Fully lower the centreboard and pull yourselves along to the transom. One of you climbs onto the centreboard while the other passes up the jib sheet. Lean back and pull on the jib sheet to right the boat. Try to scramble on board as the boat comes upright while the person in the water is scooped into the boat. Most boats have a facility to hoist a spinnaker when sailing on downwind courses to add sail area and increase speed. There are two types of spinnaker, asymmetric spinnakers which are flown from a bowsprit, that's a pole that pokes out from a bow, and conventional spinnakers which require a removable spinnaker pole that attaches to the mast. An asymmetric spinnaker is stowed and launched from a built-in chute at the bow or pouches either side of the mast. The bowsprit is normally retracted when the asymmetric is not being used, and so it has to be extended when the sail is hoisted. To hoist, the helmsman bears away to a broad reach while the crew pulls the halyard, which in many systems also extends the pole as well as hoisting the sail. The process is reversed to drop the sail. An asymmetric spinnaker is trimmed using two sheets, just like a jib. The crew must avoid oversheating the sail and try to keep it trimmed with a slight curl in the luff for maximum speed. An asymmetric is inefficient when sailing on a dead run, so sailing downwind is done in a series of reaches and jibes. Jibing an asymmetric spinnaker is a relatively simple process, but it still requires good timing and coordination between helmsman and crew. An asymmetric spinnaker is jibed just like a jib, the crew lets out one sheet as she pulls in the other. Avoid a twist developing in the sail by holding the old sheet in tight until the boat has jibed, then pulling quickly on the new sheet to pull the sail around the forestay to the new lured side. A conventional spinnaker is symmetrical and has the windward sheet, called the guy, led through the end of a movable spinnaker pole, which is attached to the mast. When the boat is jibed, the pole must be moved across the boat and attached to the spinnaker's other clue. The helmsman usually hoists a conventional spinnaker, whilst the crew fits the pole to the guy and to the ring on the mast, then adjusts the angle of the pole with the guy and takes the sheet to trim the sail. To lower the spinnaker, the crew removes the pole from the mast and brings it back into the boat, unclipping it from the guy and stowing it in the boat. She then pulls on the guy to bring the sail within reach and, as the helmsman lowers the halyard, she packs the sail into the stowage pouch. Jibing a conventional spinnaker is more complicated than an asymmetric. To jibe, the helmsman bears away to a run and the crew pulls the pole back to set the sail square across the bow of the boat. When the mainsail has been jibed, the crew removes the spinnaker pole from the mast and the old guy clips it to the new guy and to the ring on the mast. She then adjusts the guy to set the pole angle to suit the new course and takes a sheet to trim the sail. So remember, bear away to a broad reach or run before hoisting an asymmetric. Jibe an asymmetric by pulling it across the boat with the new sheet. A conventional spinnaker has a pole that needs adjusting to trim the sail. The spinnaker pole must be moved to the new windward side during a jibe. Sail on a run or very broad reach to hoist and lower a conventional spinnaker. Many high performance dinghies use one or more trapezes to allow the crew to move their weight further out of the boat. A trapeze is a wire running from a mast just above the shrouds with a ring at its bottom end. The ring attaches to a hook on a trapeze harness. Using a trapeze is not difficult but it requires practice and a degree of athleticism. To swing out on the trapeze, sit on the side deck and hook the trapeze ring onto the hook on your harness. Bend your front leg and put your foot on the gunwale. 
Let the trapeze wire take your weight and push out, bringing your aft foot out to the gunnel. Straighten your legs and back to maximise the leverage. Practice this with a good helmsman, who will need to trim the main sheet to adjust the power to keep the boat upright as you practice moving in and out. Some very high performance dinghies have trapezes for both helmsman and crew. Here, the need for coordination is even more vital and it will take considerable practice to be able to tack smoothly in a twin trapeze boat. Tacking a trapeze dinghy requires good communication between helmsman and crew. The helmsman must give the crew time to swing in from the trapeze before the tack and must control the power using the main sheet to keep the boat upright while the crew is not out on the trapeze. The crew must develop a routine for swinging in and unhooking, crossing the boat and dealing with the jib sheets, and swinging out and hooking on again on the new side. When you're experienced, you will be able to swing out before hooking on and unhook before swinging in to speed up your movements through the tack. So remember, learn to trapeze with an experienced helmsman. Sit on the side deck and hook onto the ring. Let the trapeze take your weight, sit out and put your front foot on the gunnel. Push out of your front foot and bring your aft foot to the gunnel. To tack, swing in and unhook in time to duck under the boom. One of the great things about sailing is the huge variety of boats and types of sailing there is to choose from. Before you make a decision about which is best for you, try out some of the types you haven't sailed before. If you started sailing in a two-person boat, you could try a single-hander, a catamaran, or one of the new breed of high-performance dinghy. You could also try a day-racing keelboat or a cruiser or racing yacht. There are a lot of alternatives to choose from. The best way to extend your experience is to join a club and meet other sailors with whom you can crew on different boats. You could also book a holiday at one of the many water sports centres around the world where you can try out a range of boats in a short time. Sail safely and enjoy your sailing, whatever boat you choose.